Movi Pro members. So today we're going to talk about the Mercedes-Benz Immobilizer Electronic Steering Lock Systems. Here on the bench you can see various EISs. EIS stands for Electronic Ignition Switch as well as the different keys. We got the 204 EIS, the 210, 209, 169, 215, 203, 220, and there's some others that we don't have here as well. So here we also have two examples of ESLs, electronic steering locks. You have the 204, 207 ESL, and then you have the 203 ESL here. Next to this, you can see different cables that are used for setting up bench tests to be able to test out EISs or ESLs on the bench. You have the different connectors in the back that connects to the EIS. In some cases, you can also connect to the steering lock. Then you have the power connection. And then, of course, you have the OBD port to connect the different programming tools or diagnostic tools to be able to further do analysis on the bench. We also have a customer case that we're going to be going on later on in the video where a customer shipped out a full set of the 207 EIS with the key with the steering lock. They couldn't remove the steering lock because the lock was the steering lock was in the lock position. So in order to remove this, it has to be in the unlock position and then be able to push this to remove it. So they sent it in with the, the steering shaft and we'll be able to test this on the bench later on to find out where the problem lies. Yeah, so this is pretty much an overview of uh, the Mercedes system here. We're gonna go through um, each and every one. What we also wanna mention here is we actually have our in-house brand V-Pro electronic steering lock simulators. And what these are, are their bypass modules for various kinds of EIS. So these steering locks are actually fairly common for them to fail. And just to give you an idea of how the system works is whenever you insert the key into the electronic ignition switch, the EIS checks to see if the key is actually authorized within it. So once it checks the serial number, the SSID and everything else, makes sure everything is good, gets the green light, sends the signal to the steering lock saying, hey, I got the right key. You can unlock the steering lock. And once the steering lock unlocks, sends the signal back to the EIS saying, all right, steering lock is unlocked. Now you can send the command to the engine computer to say, all right, fire the igniters, fire the injectors, let's get the car running. And that's how you get the car moving forward. Now, if the key or the EIS or the steering lock has an issue, you're not able to actually start the vehicle and, and drive. And so a lot of times what happens is the first failure is between the key or the ESL, so depending on the condition of it. So what we have is we have capabilities of actually able to read the key through the IR and see if we can read the full data and diagnose to see if this is where the problem lies. And we have capabilities of testing to see if the steering lock is also bad or the EIS through these harnesses that we have on the table here. And so we can set them up on the table, fire up our software, test out the different commands and see if any of these control modules are not working as it's supposed to. So earlier on, as we said, we have our in-house steering lock bypass module. So a lot of times these steering locks, because there's a motor in there, the motors weaken, stop working. It doesn't have enough power or juice to be able to unlock and there's a gear in there. So the motor turns, gear turns, releases the steering lock. And so when the motor weakens, the steering lock doesn't work anymore, you can't start the vehicle. A lot of times shops uh, misdiagnose and think it's a key issue or immobilizer issue, EIS meaning. Similar to this case here, they actually wanted us to replace the EIS, but we did tell them to send us the complete unit because the EIS replacement is expensive and eventually actually turned out to be just the key itself. But we also found out that the motor is pretty weak, so we're gonna actually use a, a steering bypass module for that for them as well. And so back to this in-house steering lock bypass module, what this can do is it can actually replace a lot of the EIS uh, steering locks up there. And that actually covers the 210, 209, 169, 215, 203, 220. It can actually also cover the sprinters, the 906, the 639s, the 211s, and the list goes on. So this one piece can actually help you save a lot of money. So if you have any issues with any of these steering locks on this, mention on this label, and we're gonna put a link onto the description for you to be able to buy them. They're less than $100 and they're plug and play. You can easily remove the steering lock, plug this in, clear the codes, and the only downside is you're not gonna be able to have a lock steering 
will whenever releasing the key, but you're gonna be saving a lot of money there. So this is available for you to use. Now for the newer EISs, which is the 204, 207, which is this kind of EIS right here with the plugs looking like that. This is actually a 204. The one that the customer brought in is a 207. This one here uses a different steering lock where you actually need to program this steering lock. And we do this here at VPro where we are able to program this for a very reasonable cost and that eliminates this electronic steering lock and it's gonna be working lifetime for you. So the customer actually also decided to replace this with one of this because of the fact that we realized the motor here was pretty weak on locking and locking as well. And of course, we are also able to do a key for any of these EISs out there. So let's say for example, you're a shop or you're a owner of a Mercedes and you've lost all the keys or the key got damaged or it's gone into the washing machine. We've heard that before and it stopped working so what you can do is you're able to mail in any of these EISs to us and that's all we need and we are able to actually generate a key for them turn around time one business day and ship them back to you at a reasonable price and again all these services are available at vpro for you to look into so over here you can see the different kind of keys that mercedes had created from the beginning so this is the oldest kind of ir key out there it's typically called the fish eye key shaped like a fish eye i guess these ones do have a motorola processor on there and the next one here is what's called a neck key nec as well these are serviceable so if there's any issues with these keys we try to repair them replace the switches or move the main chip from this board onto another donor board. And then the latest key that Mercedes has is called the Chrome style key, the FBS3, also FBS4, but right now the FBS4 keys cannot be generated, only the FBS3. These are not serviceable if they're the BGA style key. With that said, if you have any keys that you think might be the problem, you can always send it to us. You know, if one of the switches are not working, uh, we're able to replace those switches. If there's any corrosion in there, if it's uh, early on, we're able to to clean it up through some soldering and uh, hopefully we can also test out all the signals through the IR, the radio frequency as well, test them out if they're sending the proper frequency. So that's another service that we actually offer at VPro for you. So what we're gonna go next onto this video is pretty much show you a glimpse of the functionality of the customer's full set that they sent in and uh, we'll go from there. So here we have the full steering column that the customer mailed in to us with the steering lock locked in because of the fact, as mentioned earlier, the only way to be able to release it is if the steering lock was in the unlock position you're able to push this in and pull it up, but right now you cannot. We also have the 207 EIS that the customer thought is the problem and wanted us to replace it. And we have the key as well. We have the 204 bench setup cable that we are going to connect with you here into the EIS. We have a 12 volt adapter that connects into this bench cable to power up the EIS and the steering lock. And we have the harness for the steering lock right here. And so with this setup, we are actually able to right away test to see if it works on the bench. Because a lot of times what we actually find out is they send us all this units and we put the key in and it actually works. The steering lock releases, you hear it release, and everything works. Right off the bat, without even connecting the diagnostic tool, that tells us the key is good, the EIS is good, and the ESL is good. Well, in this case, nothing happened, right? We put the key in, we did not hear the steering lock release, so clearly there's a problem somewhere, right? Now, one other note to mention to the techs out there is the 204-207 EISs will allow you to turn the key into the vehicle right? However, if the key is not authorized or if you do not get the okay command from the steering lock, when you turn it into your vehicle, your dash will not light up. And when I say your dash, I mean the instrument cluster. It will stay dark. However, when you have a good working key that go in and you turn it on, that's when the dash turns on. However, the older EISs, you are not able to turn the key. It's actually locked. So there's an internal mechanism where it's locked and when the key and the EIS are good, it releases and then allows you to turn. 
So that's another point to uh, to bring up right there. So what we're gonna do now as a first step is we always test the key out. And what we're using is we're using a tool that's called the X-Horse VVDI MB tool. Uh, we do have limited stock of these, so you can also check our website for this. And what we do right away is we insert the key and the software here, we go through the read write key and try to read the key. Right off the bat, it's actually meant saying here that there is no key inserted. Right away, that tells us that the problem is most probably lying on the key itself. And so sometimes what may happen is there might be some dirt or scratches in the front here, so you can clean it up, try it out from a different angle, see if you can get a read. What we also do is try to get multiple reads because sometimes the customer says it works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work. But in this case, it's not reading at all. So right off the bat, we figured out that the key is bad. So what we did in this case is we actually created a new key for the EIS. And once we created that, the SSID here would match the SSID of the EIS. And then we would test it right away on the bench. And here we go. So you just heard the steering lock unlock. And as mentioned earlier, once it's unlocked, you're able to push it in to release it. So I guess bada bim bada boom right there. But yes, the problem all along was the key itself, where the customer thought it was the EIS, which was the most expensive piece. So what we do is we actually test this multiple times onto the, vehicle, onto the bench, make sure that it's fully working. But as you can hear, based on experience, we know that sound is a weak motor sound. And so based on that, we actually recommended, as you can see right there, it actually didn't unlock and now it did. So these are signs of a weak motor. And so what we recommended the customer in this case is the fact that we have the full setup on the bench, we charged a very low fee to actually install a bypass module. And that way this is a lifetime warranty. You don't have to worry about this issue anytime soon or ever again. With that said, there's a lot of customers that try to buy a $10, $20 motor for these steering locks that are advertised all around the web. But unfortunately, sometimes you get a bad apple, you get weak motors, fake motors that you know might work for let's say a week, a month, and then you have to do the whole thing again. So what we recommend is actually going with one of the bypass modules right here. And again, the only downside with this is you're not gonna have the wheel locked when you release the key. So what we did in our case is we unlocked this, released it, and then we were able to, so as you can see, I actually disconnected it while it's in the unlock position. So it's always gonna be unlocked. And we connected the bypass steering lock here and what we did was we retrieved the data from the EIS, retrieved the password, prepared the right file, wrote the right file into the steering lock, programmed it in, and everything is good to go. And we were also able to test this through the tool itself. And as a bonus, we're gonna show you how that works. So here we go. So we're gonna connect the OBD cable right here. And now we have full communication into the setup. And we're gonna go through the software here. We're gonna go through the EIS, OBD, CAN, because it's a CAN-based EIS, we were able to read the full data here. And we're not gonna go into details here, that'd be another, another video. And what we have here is test EIS and working key. And we press start, and it says switch ignition on with the key. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually insert the customer's original key, because that's another way of testing this, right? So we're gonna insert it, I'm going to turn it as it requested us to turn into the on position and press OK. Now one thing you're going to notice here is these are different statuses of the ignition. So 15, let's call it on position. 50 is the crank position. 15R is the accessory position. So we have a mechanical status and we have a can status. So if I start turning the key into crank, you can see that the mechanical status is sending the 50 command. And as we said earlier, the 50 command is the crank signal. Now you might say, yeah, well, that's good. That means the original key is working, right? Unfortunately, no, because the can signal is what's important. The mechanical signal is the mechanical portion of this EIS, so that's working fine. It's turning as it's need to be, and it's turning into the right positions. However, this EIS is not sending the CAN signal to be able to allow the DME to proceed further. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna show you how this is different with a functional key. So I'm gonna insert the key. You're gonna see right away that when I inserted the key, we got a CAN status on here, which means that the EIS and the key got accepted. 
turn to accessories. You can see that mechanically it turned into the accessory and the can status, it sent the can status into the bus to turn into accessory. On position, crank. So this is how we know this setup is completely working and 100% success rate once it's connected back into the vehicle. So as you can imagine, this was a fairly quick analysis and fairly quick test to see what is working and not working on the bench. And as you may already be thinking is you can actually do this for any vehicle system setup out there. If you have the right tools, if you have the right cables, if you have the right setup, if you have the right expertise, you are able to actually create these setups, find the problem on the bench, test it on the bench, program it on the bench, and go from there. For those that actually have these issues and don't know where to go and don't know who to send this to to service, well, you can always send it to us at vpro.ca. Email us, contact us. We'll uh, let you know where to mail in your modules. And again, we're able to help you out. We always stock these in place. Earlier on, we mentioned that we had the bypass steering locks for the older EISs and steering locks. One nice thing about that steering lock is it works on the Sprinter USA Canada models as well, because there's a lot of cases where the sprinters also fail to start and those are really expensive repairs by replacing the steering locks. However, our in-house brand uh, V-Pro steering lock works with Canadian and USA sprinters, unlike the other steering lock bypass modules for sprinters that are primarily for the Middle East and European side. So the ones that we have work with Sprinter USA and if you own a sprinter, I highly suggest buying them. They do not cost a lot, less than $100. Whenever you have an issue where the vehicle did not start, plug that in, clear the codes, and if it runs, you're good to go. Remove the old steering lock because you do not you do not want to keep that in there just for security safety purposes. Remove that, eliminate it. That way there's no chances of this actually locking the wheel, even though it's very hard for it to do, but just in case, better be safe than sorry. With that said, that was pretty much a summary of uh, what we had done with this customer's vehicle. We're going to ship this out to more to them. They're pretty happy with the service. If you have any comments, any other videos you'd like us to uh, run through, slowly, slowly, we'll be pumping out more and more. We have our first soldering class, hopefully in November, end of November, beginning of December, we're planning to set up 10 stations here, in hand soldering class for beginners intermediate. We're gonna have more information on the website, so stay tuned for that. Keep sending us your comments. Hopefully you like, subscribe, share these videos around for those that might be interested in these type of knowledge-based videos. And as always, hopefully you learned something. And until then, take care.